My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Rannis, Lord of the Dead. If you have been waiting for this game to go on sale as of the release of this video, if I have calculated things correctly, the game should be available to purchase from Steam for $25 USD or your regional equivalent. It is in early access as well, do keep that in mind. There are some bugs that I've run into over the course of this series so far, and I cannot promise that you won't run into some as well. But also, as being in early access, it is not necessarily the footage you are currently seeing, reflective of the polished state of the end product. Those are all the things I have to say to be a responsible person, guy, and now it's time to play the game. Hmm. Okay, if I go in this direction, I... What? I have this battle before I have to decide... Definitely don't want to go the cheapest way out, so... Yeah, I think I do want to go the longest way around, so I think I am going to the Ancient Coffin first. At very least, this will give us a choice of item. Resistance plus initiative on taking damage. Luck plus initiative on moving. Or... Dread. I'm going to take Resistance as well as... Uh, as, as well as increase initiative on moving. Sorry, on, on taking damage, rather. I think I will give this to the zombie that's taken a hit already. I don't know where all the parts are going to come from that I'm going to need to actually get these units upgraded. We'll see. I think I should probably start burning the alchemist here. Said the trader does all of the really annoying stuff. No, we'll ignite the alchemist. Okay, at least the zombies are decent tanks up there in the front line. Okay, that buff is for plus 50% to the damage. Not damage in general, the damage. Uh, that makes it even more threatening. Okay, so it's to a target and the enemy standing behind. Great. Blow them to pieces. Ice blood heads. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha. It's the only voice I can possibly get from that zombie looking at that goofy ass face. Uh, that's not what I wanted. All right. If we can get the alchemist down before this match actually starts. Oh, damn it. Of course. Trader is already going on. Now, unfortunately, the worst case, uh, the worst thing about this, rather, is the trader removing debuffs from a target that we target means that the trader actually removes Ignite. Okay. Really wish that crit. Is that going to ignite both of them? It is. And it's not getting a one-off. Beautiful. Picked up a perk of extra initiative the next turn at least. And even more. Lovely, lovely. Let's see if we can knock you out of position. And we can do. Beautiful. So now I don't have to worry about that one so much. And we can go back to focusing the alchemist. Stop buffing everyone, please. It's very important you stop buffing everyone. Yeah, the Bride of Aratus being in the front line here is not great. I'll happily admit. 63. Yeah. It's things like that, like a sudden 63 damage that makes me think, oh, I don't know about this. Hmm. Should I focus less on a graveyard? On a hypothetical next graveyard? Not to be defeatist, but if I end up in that scenario, should I focus less on a graveyard? I think maybe. I think I do need a good squad going around on the board before I actually start deviating from that and then getting value elsewhere.
Fine. See, they can do 12 damage or they can do 63. That's... My concern is the... Suddenness... Of the death. Right. Alchemist stays on the field, goes for another buff on the trader. We're keeping everyone mad ignited here. That alchemist gets back to their turn and then doesn't necessarily die. Okay, so I'll help them into the grave then. As worthless as you were in life, you will be worth something in death. All right. Guess my goal is to start working through those charges on the trader. Didn't even lose the zombie yet. There we go. <laughs> it had to happen. It's just a matter of when. Fine. Burn off their resistances as well. Rose for Lady seems like a decent idea, just because I know it penetrates. Oh. If that crit, that possibly could have been the kill for us there. So it seems like the dwarves are mainly about tanking up. There's a little bit of disruption in the, the trader, and then the berserker is the main damage dealing for these enemies, it seems. Just from what I've encountered so far. Which is neat. It gives us a little bit more information that we can play around. Hey! Good crit. Good crit. Okay, we only lost one zombie here. Game, not bad. See, my permanent concern is if I am in a position where I've lost too much value to really have this win, then... The longer I spend before I realize that and then restart, the worse off I am. Versus the inverse of that, where, sure, maybe it's still possible that I salvage this, so I should really stick it in, just like, or uh, stick stick through it, get, get stuck in. Get stuck in is the phrasing I'm looking for there. And then the earlier I can see there, the far worse off we are. Although it has, actually is looking like it's possible that both of these end up killing me. Rose for Lady has to have me. My darling killed. Okay. Well, at least we're getting these perks. Okay, beautiful. This never gets One more down. Yeah, 135 as well, by the way. The enemy has a plus 50% of damage. That's 135, though, still. Wild. I'm going to cast these spells against you. Just to make sure that you die in time. Beautiful. So I managed to salvage exactly one zombie from that entire combat. Oh, God. Oh, God, indeed. I just... I don't know if the party can do it anymore. Wait, hang on. That's a weapon. That's a good weapon as well. For making another skeleton. And then we'll make a Dark Knight. So uninspired, you know. Excellent, excellent. Get them lined up correctly, just so. Get this skeleton upgraded with a brain as well. Hang on. Now we're starting to get a little back in the race here. So two Dark Knights, two skeletons in the back line. Both of them have a stun equipped... We have the ability to get extra wrath really easily as well now.
Gambling shit we're probably not going to want to use yet. Oh, whoa. We have the ability to heal everyone in the next space, so. Or I could get mana. Is mana important to me? Mana could actually be important to me. Sure. Sure could be. No need to express that right now, though. Go into the next location. This is ultimately one of the parties that I do want to run. Because I think being able to stun with those extra actions is just going to be so valuable for us. Take that swing against the Dwarven Warrior just to remove its armor so that I have the ability to stun on turn one. I'll use Bone Spear here to remove the block from the front Dwarven Warrior so that I can stun here as well. We just stole two whole actions from the enemies. That's so cool. Action economy coming out in full force. rest of us will shift ourselves to the front. So you can see here, this is working, right? I'm kind of like permanently, well, permanent-ish, keeping these enemies stunned. Ouch. It's the backliner's attacking actions that really causes some stress. I think I do that just for the damage. Yeah. Let's get another this stun off. Ooh! Hard. Stuns are dealing decent damage as well. Like a lot more decent damage than I actually expected. And again? I don't know. This is... This is feeling like the right way to do it right now. Come on, let's get out of this battle without losing a single unit, and then I'll be comfortable. I'm going to use a hollow stair here. So the idea is we're leaving the other Dark Knight at the front of the party, so that it has the ability to do its heal when it comes to its turn, that is. For that same reason, we don't want to do... Actually, we could do Shield Banger if we diff really wanted to. I don't think we do, though. Okay. Oh, that giant heal right there. Like, the only thing that we're risking at the moment is currently the skeleton. Like, who cares about that? Maybe this build would even work if we had to replace a skeleton each time. Maybe it would. We would definitely need some extra skeletons to hot swap in. That's something that's missing from this so far. Hmm. Oh! Extra damage on these Dark Knights would be nice, but it's not looking necessary right now. Extra max HP on them, though, would be really, really important. Make sure that they're not as uh, as likely to die in a single hit. And then the next one is push forward and stun. And then the final one is a little bit of a heal. There we go. Lovely. Oh, you know, if this keeps up, I'll be done purging the world ahead of schedule. It feels like we're actually pulling this one back from the brink. All right, so Serve Mystic Fortitude well, for some extra vigor on the skeleton there. Dark Knight, what do you want? Uh, oh, right. We are nothing upgraded. So I've got an extra talent that I can possibly pick up at this point in time. Now, I've already got extra vigor on skeletons. If I want to go down the Aya Tree, I can get to Wrath Unchained. For Dark Knights, receive plus 5 attack, plus 5 dread, and plus 5 luck. 
Uh, that tree also holds Relentless Evil, though. At the start of a turn, a, at the start of its turn, rather, a minion restores 8 Vigor if Aratus has at least 75 Wrath. The fact that I build Wrath so quickly with Dark Enlightenment means that I definitely want to go down this tree to Relentless Evil right now. So I go Drums of War at the start of its turn, a minion gains 2 initiative for 1 turn if Aratus has at least 25 Wrath. Because that'll almost always be met. Now I want to make another Skeleton, and in particular, I want to make another Decent Skeleton. So let's have a look at what we can do with that. That's a bad bones to give to a Skeleton, but... Ooh, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I can make a really good bones for the skeleton. And I'm about to give it a level 4 brain as well, so I'm happy to do that. All right. Make a high-ass level bones here. It is... Ward, luck, and attack. That's a good skeleton. That is a good skeleton. Don't want to try and upgrade it. Nope. More bones to the dogs of war. Just take him. All right. And immediately give you a brain. Now, give you the levels that we want leveled as well. Okay, so... Hark and Blood are currently the only names that I think I have awarded. Yeah, and the library and the obelisk are also empty at the moment. Mm, excavation does need to be filled, but Dead Lake is less important to fill than the library. And the obelisk seems pretty important to fill to me, but I don't know if we can focus on it right now. What gets constructed out of these? So dust, blood, flesh, and heart. Off camera, by the way, on a different save file, because the unlocks are held across save files, I managed to unlock the ghoul. The ghoul uses two flesh as well as one blood and one heart. So uh, we could construct one of them here, I guess. Uh, This we can get two of. Let's get two banshees. Maybe a blood phantasm if we can. Neat. And we've actually got people to store in here. So it's just Hark and Blood. So then for the rest of the list, we'll just award down from top to bottom. You become... Is Call of the Wild the dead one or the alive one? Call of the Wild is the alive one. Wild. Okay, so Dark Knight, you will become Kyle and you will also become the first of your name. There we go. Because I'm now going to start trying to track their deaths as well. You will become Disnamir. The first of your name. Call of the Wild. You're already there. Let's add first of your name in here as well. And then finally in the back of the line, we have... I think Moms is dead now. So this is Moms the second. I don't think there's any upgrade that I can throw on a Kyle right now. No, not really. And if I'm using the artifact, I'd be just using a Philosopher's Stone right now. But instead, we need a sacrificable unit here. I'll sacrifice a ghoul, sure. Ghouls, by the way, the ghoul is a surprisingly proud predator, seeing themselves as an apex of the food chain. Stronger, faster, and sleeker than any mortal or undead, they have the attitude of particularly lazy cats, wanting the world to revolve around them. In the end, only the threat of utter destruction can make them remember their place as servants of Iritus. So we'll craft her, have a look at the abilities, uh, butcher from the front to, to any line, it moves you back two spaces. Uh, and it does a bunch of damage, but enemies killed with that part uh, attack don't leave parts. Then there's back three, moves you forward two, can target the front, front three of the enemy party. Does less damage, but increased damage per buff or debuff on the target. Repelling mark, you can mark an ally and then repel attacks from them. You can also upgrade that to make it alluring so that you actually attract attacks to that target. Uh, just a bite, attack a target ally, dealing damage to them. It ignores block, but you restore 25% vigor. You can decrease the amount of damage you deal, or you can change what you get. Instead of Vigor, you'll get Wrath. 
then the ultimate ability, Lunch Break. The ghoul destroys a selected ally and receives the following buffs until the end of combat. Plus 50 Vigor, plus 10 Attack, plus 10 Dread, plus 10 Luck, plus 10 Evasion. Uh, and then also there's a support ability where you can digest the Devoured Minion, fully restoring your health. However, you will lose the effects of the buffs. I don't really know if that's something that I would ever want to do. Sure, you can run the ghoul in a party with a lich, and then the lich summons units, and then the ghoul eats the units, but it's much easier if you just have the lich eat the units using sacrifice, because that heals everyone in the party, and the ghoul doesn't even seem like that great of a damage dealer. To me, at this point in time, I guess. All right. So we're happy to sacrifice one. We'll do so in just a sec. I'm also pretty sure the higher level unit you sacrifice there, the far higher reward, uh, the higher, you, the higher rewards you get. I'm pretty sure that is. Parts drop 10% more often. Ooh, I love that. Black heart, 5% damage up until the damage, uh, fight ends. If you start with low vigor, eh. Starting position three gives you a block. Could be useful. Ears necklace, starting position two gives you extra lock. Starting position two gives you extra attack. Yeah, sure. Both of those necklaces are just going to go on Disnamir right now. Because if Disnamir has high enough resistance or attack or anything like that, then they'll just do a ridiculous amount of damage. Wait, what? Oh, you can't have two necklaces on the same character. Oh, that's wild. All right, well, we've swapped our party positioning around to account for that. Artifacts, what else? Yeah, let's get a Philo Stone out here as well. Now I will make mortals tremble before me. Well, even more than previously. Parts drop 10% more often and Lancet. Enemies are 10% more likely to drop parts. As well as Nobleman's Garb. Aratus gains 20% more parts after a battle if four minions were at level three or better. So if we can get all of those active at the same time, then I think we'll be raking in the rewards fast enough to actually make up for what we did earlier in the games. Alright. Actually been significantly using that. Let's get into the next combat. Okay. Don't know if there's anything necessarily new about this field. Hey, we can actually stun you. Beautiful. Let's go for a Bone Spear as well. We're just looking to remove some of the blocks from the hammer. And in fact, it removed two. Lovely. <clears throat> Early, we can get the Golden Golem down. The far better off I'm going to feel about it. That said, I'm not going to waste actions. Ooh! <laughs> Good damage. What's that buff hit? Plus 50% of damage. That's the bolstering vapor. That's real bad. I've also been hit with a mark that is probably plus 50% damage to us. Yeah, any damage received is doubled. So if the golem now just turns around and hits my frontliner, we actually probably lose them instantly. I'm going to use hollow stare here. Sorry, not hollow stare. Dark tithe. This is to remove the debuff from myself so I'm no longer taking double damage just so that I don't instantly lose that unit. This is already an additional attack for each buff on the target. There are two buffs on the Golden Golem here. The Regeneration as well as the Vapors. Oh! Part of the breathless time. What a great opening to the fight. Look at this team. Okay, that hurt. And please don't have bugged out and stunned two of my units permanently. I'm never going to let that uh, be lived down. That's something that I'm always going to be terrified of until the end of time here. Alright. See if we can kill the alchemist early here, I guess. Definitely stun him. <clears throat> Yeah, that's going to have to be another just purge on my turn. Stun? 
Hey, prevented the hammer from getting that turn off. Love it. Impale this wretch. Decent amount of extra damage there as well. All right. Ooh, do I dark type? I've got acid bomb, so I've lost all resistance and armor. So I'm actually not even dealing that much damage because we are nothing deals additional damage based on 50% of the sum of my armor and my resistance. So I wouldn't have even been dealing that much damage there. So definitely a purge, definitely. That regeneration is just an extra hit for me as far as I'm concerned. God, those debuffs, really severe. Oh, yikes. Dealing no damage to the Alchemist there. That makes sense, though. Alchemist is now down. No longer needs to be so concerned about it. It's still really important that I just keep the hammer stunned to prevent them from ever getting an action. Yeah, this party is great. Especially if I can get back to the Disney Mirror. That is to say, the Dark Knight that just took that. Disney Mirror. And use a another... Yeah, I got a Dark Tithe here. Uh, and then use a Abyssal Hunger just to get the heal up before the end of the battle. See? There goes the hammer. Ugh. In the next round of combat as well, we get a stun off on the Oracle here. Or the Oracle can just immediately run away. Perfect. <sighs> yes. We actually basically full heal back out of that as well from the 50% healing, 15 rather percent healing we get from the standard of darkness. All right, Disnamir, yours. Like, mainly I'm going to want you to focus on getting uh, resistance and armor with your abilities here. Get back to battle. Yeah. Is there anything from these other things I'm going to want? I guess Kyle, yeah. Kyle, if we level you up right now, my enemy. then I can change my garb to the Undertaker's clothes and I can actually get the... Not Undertaker, sorry, the Nobleman's Garb. And I can actually get the plus 20% to extra parts. This could work. That requires a ghoul. Do I have a ghoul sitting around? No, but I should have the parts to create one, right? Yeah, that's one extra ghoul. Also craft a shade because that'll be useful in further crafting later on. All right, I actually legitimately think we may have salvaged this run. As much as I was complaining earlier, clearly there's something we can still get done here. Damn. I'm actually really, really pleased with that. All right, can I get another ghoul? I can, apparently. No, no, I can't. Right, yeah, I'm out of flesh to get ghouls. Unless I want to go for a higher level. <sighs> Fine. You will bring me their heads, their hearts, and everything else. Fine, that'll do. Right, and then if I go back to talents in Aya, I can't get to Frenzied Howling yet, but I don't care about Frenzied Howling. Do I care about a mock? Losing lock but gaining attack and dread until the end of combat? No, I don't really care about that. Ooh. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same amount of combats. I'm choosing between elite later or earlier. And when I want the coffin. I guess I want the coffin before the elite. Yeah. Just so I have the possibility of picking up an item from it and then taking it in. Missing with an attack will give us plus six luck. Yeah. Plus five lock, if you start your turn at the fifth position, uh, sorry, fourth position, you get extra chance to find extra parts of victory. Eh. We don't debuff targets, so it's just not witch skin. I think it, maybe missing with an attack should make us extra lucky. No, that doesn't seem to make sense. I think it should just be extra lock and it goes on a character that's already got some crit ability.
I mean, Mom's currently does start in the fourth position. It's extra ability to find extra parts, and you know I love those extra parts. And in particular, having an extra ability to find them. Very glad that one wasn't redirected there as well, by the way. Okay. Only if that crit would that have even gone through. So we've got a heavy flamethrower here. That's going to be a problem. Although I imagine that's going to be a stunnable problem. So maybe I don't actually need to care about that as much. You've done total advance. Plus six to armor and plus six to resistance. You're in the front line now. Yeah, I'm very clearly going to need the ability to stun you. Unfortunately, you also have 18 in armor. So, like, shield, uh, smite the show-offs, despite the fact that it'll attack a bunch of times, isn't going to be good against you. So it definitely has to be just the ignoring armor strike there. Great. Oh, wait, what? That's so annoying. Oh, that's a bunch of damage the enemy's doing as well. Yeah, because the traitor managed to... Oh, I hate the traitor so much. Impale this wretch. Okay, it's because the traitor removed the debuff of skipping a turn from the heavy flamethrower there. It's really annoying. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, so if you have the ability to do that, how do I counter it? Well, I can stun this one first, then stun the other one, but yeah, I don't really have too much time to do that. I have to stand here and use the Dark Tide, otherwise I die. That purges the, the burning. I would love to have some more so I could use Abyssal Hunger there, but I can't. And again, now I don't have the ability to actually even stun the heavy uh, flamethrower here. Just the fact that the trader has the ability to purge that off targets is so, so deadly for us. Impale this wretch. I think the best thing I can do is get rid of the traitor right now. Oh, God. Oh, yikes. And that's another stance, of course. There's another giant burn. Those ignites. One of those ignites is going to kill one of my dark knights right now. This sucks. Yeah. There goes one of them. <clears throat> yep. See, I can't reposition the second one backwards yet. That's so frustrating. Well, at least I've still got my higher level units around. Hopefully they make it out of this battle. Otherwise, God, what do we do? Alright. Yeah, your armor is absorbing a lot of stuff here, bud. Maybe tamp that down if you could. Now, I like at the very least that the Heavy Flamethrower is doing nothing against these units. But unfortunately, we're already robbed of our ability to do the whole bone bully shield thing by the enemies changing themselves, or rather by not having any other units to dash behind. <laughs> down. Now, by having killed that unit, we have access to the Berserker, so they can actually kill the Berserker. Oh, God. Really? 
Well, still haven't lost either of my units. Could have been a lot worse. Impale this wretch. Perish. Two. Damn, good crits. This enemy hasn't even got another stance up. I don't know. Maybe it's possible we actually get to keep our units. Fingers crossed. It seems pretty likely here now. Give them no mercy. Beautiful. All right. At least I get to keep these two. Whew. Mine is the winning side. Yikes overall though. Still an overall yikes from me. Uh, none of the extras are useful right now. Obviously, we're going to have to sub out both of you as well to heal up. So what? I have to make a whole party that's ready to... I can't even check the map right now. I have to make a whole party that's ready fit to just go back out into the fights? Hardly an inspiring but the dead cannot for morale. That's fine. At least I can get some more experience for Aratus. Now this gives me the ability to get Frenzied Howling. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty close to Relentless <laughs> Evil. Slaughter. Are we? One, two, three, three, six. So I need four more levels. That's only a couple spaces with, like, decent results from things. Oh, God. See, our most powerful squad just got torn through and put in its place. And now we have to go and fight an elite. So it's feeling like we were getting back on top of things. But... The game wasn't comfortable with that and moved us back to the back. Right. Can I make a party again? It's going to have to be a physical damage party, right? It's going to have to be a physical damage party. Hmm. Does it? Does it have to be a physical damage party? For the elites in this area, it can be. Maybe I take a Banshee. And then obviously like a Bride of Aratus backline. But if I have a higher level Bride of Aratus, I'll take that. Ooh, hang on. Never mind. We have another skeleton. That's a second liner. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, we don't have any better Brides of Rodas. Okay, so you go in the back line then. Just because zombies in the back line aren't particularly inspired, in my opinion. Trophy out of the dead lake and back up into there. Okay, so we can get one more of you leveled up. I think it's the Dark Knight. So why would it be the Dark Knight? What do you get out of your three levels here? Well, the first one would be no tomorrow being to affect enemies that are debuffed. And then Banshee would also be using Excel, uh, not Accelerano, but Soprano regularly. So the Dark Knight would actually be hitting out for the enemies. That could be useful. What if we put it on the Banshee? We're only really upgrading Soprano then. Yeah, I think it just goes on the Dark Knight. And then we make you a tankier frontline presence as well. Get yeah. back to battle. So tomorrow, death comes for everyone. And then... I kind of want you to have a little bit more accuracy as well. No one has a high amount of initiative here, so there's no reason to change to the light armor. Minions with at least eight initiative at the beginning of the battle have eight accuracy and eight evasion until the battle ends. Uh, all right, let's give all enemies negative 15 accuracy as well for the next combat. Mm-hmm. 
all of the enemies being elites is a concern. All right, elite golden golem, I think, is going to be our first target. Damn it. Yeah, even if that had crit, it wouldn't have stunned there. Uh, do we want to taunt us a skeleton? No. Just focus on trying to take the golem out. So that's regen across the party, but at the very least, that regen is going to trigger an extra swipe from our skeleton. I can magic attack and just stun both the frontline targets here. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that's the correct choice, though. All right. That skeleton's also going to get to actually hit the stun as it moves itself forward here, so I'm very appreciative that it was moved backwards. I'm also actually going to pivot this into a stress dealing sitch. Yeah, because I just debuffed a bunch of targets and then, ooh, get to double dip and hit them again. I think it's going to be the easiest way to get both of these elite alchemists down, especially if we can get them insane in a way that is, you know, not uh, deadly for me. Fine. <clears throat> I guess maybe I'm controlling the golem while I go for the other two targets on the field. Or the other two viable current targets on the field. Held a lot of buffs on that golem though. Why well, didn't I didn't mean to do that? I was just clicking to look at the buffs. Damn it. I think that probably still would have been the actual turn that I would have taken anyway, so I think it's fine, but still. <laughs> Hey. Uh, yes, please. Terror. Ooh, good crit damage right there. Finally, we've got a target insane. They've lost initiative and they deal less damage and take extra damage. Beautiful. That's a good one. Impale this wretch. So smite the show offs here should hit four times. One, two, three. Four. Oh, five. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Oh, it was two stacks of restoration is why it hit for five. Beautiful. Your last. My god, this is actually looking a lot more winnable. What I've learned is I should clearly not be downing myself. But then again, I didn't doubt myself in the first run. And where did that lead us? To ruin an oblivion. <laughs> We can stop with all of the debuffs right now, though. Please, game, please. Hmm. <laughs> ah, one more insanity. And yeah, you're going to flee. But you'll also deal stress damage to everyone else. That's lovely. Let's get the stun that we have access to. And then I'm going to also move the Bride of Aratus backwards just so that the Banshee is in position to actually use useful moves here. Unfortunately, Abyssal Hunger has to go off. No way around that. Um. Ooh, Shield Banger. Hell yes. Yeah, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna go with stressing them out. That's not gonna do it. Damn it! Get one down. Hey, there we go. One down. Chain. Damn it. We're actually getting close to the boss of the second floor. <laughs> So I am feeling pretty comfortable in saying that the the boss doesn't seem to be, at the very least for the first floor, the boss doesn't seem to be the hardest part of the fight. 
or rather the hardest part of the floor. It's getting there. In particular, getting there with a party that's still capable of taking it out. So how do I act better with that information? Oh, I've also got a Humanarium token for the Elite Golden Golem. Let's have a look at that. Elite Golden Golem all the way down here. Uh, before you ask, no, the Alchemist's Guild has not uncovered the secrets of turning lead into gold, but that still hasn't stopped them from using it liberally to aggrandize themselves. Creating golems out of pure gold to act as bodyguards might seem extravagant expenditure, but it still pales in comparison to the golden toilets, golden tables, and golden beds they're most pr uh, that most members are moving to have installed in their private sanctuaries. The simple perks of ruling dwarven society. Ooh, skeleton even gets an upgrade here. Lovely, lovely. Not sure what I want to throw that on yet, though. Banshee, yours has definitely got to be and just ah, continuing to lower the attack incoming. Results. Long piercer as well. I mean, hang on. We're what? One dark night away from a full build again? Do I have the ability to make another dark night? What am I missing? What? No, Ica, no. Dust. I'm missing dust. I actually have the ability to construct dust. Dust is simply two rags. Hold my work. Okay, so now I can make a Dark Knight. Three extra lock. Do I want to give him Dark Knight three extra lock? I think it's fine. You know what? I actually don't want to give you three extra lock, but I might want to give you whatever a blue so weapon will be. Cool. Two attack and four evasion. Yeah, that's very much not you. Sorry. That's totally okay, though, because we can make you with a normal weapon still. Him, Turn you into level three. So our earlier Dark Knights died. One of them was Disnamir, and one of them was, I believe, Kyle. So then I should have Disnamir the second and Kyle the second. Lovely. Throw both of you at the back of the party. Actually, hang on. Sub you out entirely and go back to the original party. Neat. And even better than that, we've got the Nobleman's Guard active again. So we can start getting the right equipment for these units. My enemies are in for a nasty surprise. And what do I throw onto you now? Death comes for everyone? Yeah, death comes for everyone. Serve me well, my Final friend. skeleton, sorry, but you're just a little ill-equipped. We'll give you Mystic my Fortitude and not take you out again. For a nasty surprise. We get enough levels here in order to get a mock as well as rites of carnage. Right Only need two more to get relentless evil which is actually going to be helping us heal in between the combats enough to, I don't know, feel comfortable just running with this party for the rest. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Aratus, Lord of the Dead. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.